Welcome to Stroke of Genius Podcast, Survive Fair Experience. I'm your host, Aaron Avila. You, I can't believe this. My guest this morning, Lori Bober, just got on. She was having technical issues, just gone. So I wanted to welcome you. The real question I have for everyone out there, do you think that you as Stroke Survivor can live a fulfilling life after stroke? I know for sure the answer is 100% yes. And I really believe that this guest, Kevin up, Lori, will back that up. So let me bring her on camera right now. Welcome to the Stroke of Genius Show, Survivor Experience. Now, here's your host, Aaron Avila. Oh, you beat it. I'm good, Aaron. Good morning, Lori. Hey, thank How, you. How are thank you? you. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome, honey. It's my pleasure. But you you got a little bit of lag, but we'll work to just understand that after you say something, there's a little bit of delay. Okay. And there's someone coming in your door behind you. It's my new service dog, Aaron. Really? <laughs> He's a little bit of a handful, but I'm working <laughs> on it. <laughs> Great. Well, Louie, let's start out this podcast. By uh, introducing yourself, if you would please. Okay. Yes, my name is Lori Vober, and I suffered a hemorrhagic stroke 20 years ago at the age of 29 in January of 2003. Well, you got me beat here. I thought it was when I, I had my stroke and brain injuries in 2010. So, really, quick you, you got me beat on that one. But Louis, let's jump on in. We only got half an hour together, and it goes by so quick. If you need to deal with your dog, just hit this. He does podcasts and real. That's okay. That's okay. But we'll let him do his thing. Okay, great. I asked a question in the beginning. I want you to answer. Wait, I'm gonna get oh, yeah. Just... Show, show him to the, where this video is also on YouTube. We do the podcast audio only on C-Suite Radio. And now, um, for those who are watching on YouTube, we just get to see Lower Service Dog, which is a uh, which is a German Shepherd. It is. It is. He's seven months old, so we're working on training right now. That's really great. Uh, Lori, let's back up a little bit. I'm going to ask you what I introduced the podcast about. Do you believe, do you think that a person can live a fulfilling life as a stroke? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I had my stroke in 2003. And since then, I have become an adoptive mom of three. I'm now an author, a published author a speaker, and now I have a new baby, a seven-month-old uh, service dog. So absolutely, joy, success, happiness is all part of just a new normal, and it's all a perspective. It's just a matter of not being stuck and moving on. And uh, many times, as you know, um, Aaron, uh, and your many of our listeners know, um, challenges come in, in many forms, and it's not what we intended in our lives, but we must continue and we must just find the happiness and and uh, keep going and find the joy where we can. It's a choice. Yes, there. That boy, you end up with a powerful one. Now, sometimes it's choice. People listen. Yeah. A stroke TV media really and this podcast. I created a culture, good genius podcast. Really has a different take on stroke from the norm, and it's called mindset. I think mindset is foundational to stroke rehabilitation. I'm not a big advocate of the word recovery, more rebuilding. And I think it really starts with what Lori just said it 
a choice. You right now, today, have a choice. Yeah. Either let's start defining who you are or move forward and learn from it. So, Lori, you've learned from your stroke. You are accomplishing amazing things. Thank you, Aaron. Yes. And I'm still learning and I'm still growing every single day. So, you know, I've, I've learned that uh, I used to think, oh, my goodness, I'm going to recover in five years. And I, I'm sure when I used to say that to my therapist, they would they would chuckle under their breath because they knew at the time what I did it, that I wouldn't recover. Put um, a spin of negativity on that for those of you that may be in the beginning stages of your recovery it's just not realistic and i've learned it's a lifelong journey and i know that uh, you look at recovery um in a special way erin and i love how you look at recovery um I, and, and you put a special spin on it because it is a lifelong journey um and it ends right it never ends is a day to day i'm going to use the word battle yeah, it is. We are not here saying it's easy. It's not easy. Finding life as right. a joke is not easy. And you know, want to make clear, but I want to know, want you to know out there, audience. And Jamie from the United Kingdom has given us thumbs up. But thank you for being there, Jamie. But it's really a choice. It really is a decision. You you nailed it on your when you're first introducing yourself, it's a choice. So today, choose to not let start to find you. Right? And that's yeah, let, well, let me let me be your story. Yeah, you you did you know what stroke was before you had one? I did it. And in fact, I'm very active in the community. Um, trying to uh, let other people know what the signs of stroke are. Because when I had my stroke at age 29, I had no clue of what the signs of strokes were. And I almost waited too late. Um, at the time, I had a, that day, that particular day, I had a really bad headache. I had a, felt really sick to my stomach. My left arm was a little numb. And I called my husband and said, I don't feel well. And he said, oh, maybe you pulled a muscle working out the night before. And uh, it wasn't until my left leg went numb and I fell from my chair at work that we called 911. And within an hour, um, I was unconscious in the ambulance. It was a hemorrhagic stroke, like I mentioned, um, caused by a malformation of blood vessels on the right side of my brain, a birth defect that was never detected, um, that caused a brain bleed. And had I waited too much longer, I would not be here. So I, I have a very strong faith. I know you do too. So I give all glory to God that number one, he allowed me to survive. But number two, that he gave me the traits to thrive in this new normal. Um, and I, you know, I get frustrated just like you get frustrated, just like our listeners are listening, um, probably get frustrated with their challenges. But I don't forget, um, you know, the alternative. And I think that's what we have to remember. Even when we get frustrated, there is that alternative. And uh, we have to remember what the alternative is um, always that someone always has it worse. There's always um, the other side of not being here. And so. Um, we have to keep that perspective. Yeah, and that's why, you know, the Stroke of Genius podcast, the reason I did it, and the reason I'm streaming after being some very, some certain learn, neurological groups on, on LinkedIn is because I don't really care for the word recovery. Since I know it's used. It's a very common word, but it's a rebuilding. It is starting to rebuild. Yeah. I deconstructed for seven years. And I can be former stroke, obviously. <laughs> but. Um, and I love that rebuilding because it's almost like a, that I, I, you've used that before. And I love that because I think of a right. house when you say rebuilding and you still have right. your foundation, right? I mean, your foundation is always there. And so you just, it's like a house fire, right? And so we're just rebuilding from. From the ground. Wow, Lord, yeah. that was awesome. A number two foundation is still there. We are still here. Who yeah. we who you are, who we 
are or will be for a stroke. We're thinking because we can't move the way we used to. We're not there. But the foundation is still there. Oh, I love that. I love it. Yeah, I love the rebuilding. Yeah, the that. rebuilding yeah. is, you know, I, I looked at the words one time. The word recovery doesn't is not as an, is a noun. Doesn't have action. But the one that does is rebuilding. Now that is a verb and requires someone to be active and do something. And that really is well, hey Kim, let me give I see Kim on there. Kim just rebelling. She, her, her husband, a stroke, a very serious stroke, has a patient. And it's a rebuilding process. And Kim is the caregiver. And she's a type of stroke survivor, in my book. I mean, her husband and family, they're all types of stroke survivors. I call that the ripple of to stroke, Lori. But let's get back to your. Because I want to hear more of your story. But you were 29 years old. What were you doing at the time when you had a stroke? So I was working at our church. And I say, honestly, that is also um, an amazing um, gift from God. Because I originally was working uh, previously at the airline industry. My background is sales and marketing, customer support. And my husband and I had been trying for about a year to start our family, had not been successful yet. And I was doing a lot of traveling with the airline industry. So I decided to um, slow life down a little bit and try and um, hopefully um, increase our chances of starting our family by taking a job at our church. And that's our plans, not yeah. not apparently God's plans. And I say many times in our journey, um, you know, we, we always have our own plans and God has his plan. And even when tough things happen, I think that's the problem sometimes. Um, tough things happen in our lives and we're like, well, where's God? Well, you know what? His plan never changes. Our plans change. And that's where our blind faith comes in. We've got to remember his plan never does change. It's our plans that change. And and uh, his plan all along was to, I believe, save my life. And uh, he he did that. Um, you know, I took that job at the church, I thought, to um, increase our chances to start our family. And three weeks into that job, um, on a Friday afternoon, I had this stroke. And had I been at the airline industry, I could have been in a building. I could have been on a hotel. I could have been on an airplane. Um, I really don't know that I would have survived. And, uh, you know, there are so many challenges since then, um, Aaron. Um, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I was in a 17-day drug-induced coma, woke up completely paralyzed on the left side. Then I was in the hospital for a total of two months trying to recover, had multiple brain surgeries, came home two months after um Two months after the hospital discharge, my husband lost his job because he was in the airline industry. And that was after September 11th. And, and everything was a mess in aviation at that time. And uh, But God in his, his graciousness, he gave us a new opportunity in Arizona. And that's where we live now. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity because with the heat and uh uh, that's much better than the ice in the sky yeah. in Minnesota yeah. where we live. So that, that was another amazing plan. And I have a new rehab facility that I worked at um, called Swan Rehab. And I believe if we had not moved to Arizona and not found Swan, I, my recovery probably wouldn't be where I am today. Um, I, I really threw myself into therapy and uh, it was a six to eight hour for many, many, many years. That's all I did was therapy. And so, you know, God has an ultimate plan. We just have to hold tight to that. And uh, um, it, I'm 20 years in and I look back and I think, gosh, I should be farther along. But then at the same time, I have to remember I could not be farther along. So, it, again, it goes back to perspective. And I have to remember physically, I'm not nearly as far along as I wanted to be, but emotionally and um uh, career wise and successfully, I never thought God would use this opportunity to help me um, share my journey the way I have. And had I not had a stroke and I had I not had all these challenges, I wouldn't have the story that I have today. 
to share with the world. And so it's all what you do with it. And so many times our story blooms from our hard challenges. And uh, so I encourage those of our, our listeners that have had hard challenges to use it for a purpose because God could see things in our lives for a reason. Yeah, you know, that is testimony. It's, our lives are testimony. It's hard times are really yeah. God's way of creating a testimony. You're here today. I'm here today. Because stroke became our purpose. I know it sounds strange. I know people may have our terms, but stroke and brain aneurysm brought me into the main, my destiny of life, really. A God-given destiny. I'm helping thousands and thousands of people around the world. I'm so I'm, I'm I'm living a more fulfilled life than ever. And you, you're an author. Tell me about your book. Yes, yes. So my first book is called Choices. Um, this this is what it looks like right here choices. Um, When you're faced with a challenge, what choice will you make? It came out in March 2002. um, I'm sorry, 22, uh, uh, 2022. And uh, uh, it's all about uh, my stroke recovery. Um, It's about adopting our three kids from Columbia, South America. And really, it applies to anybody and everybody. Because what I did, it's not only about our journey, but it's also about any and everybody read reader um, and their journey because I put uh, reflective questions at the end of each chapter because I didn't want it just to be about me. I wanted the reader to actually embark on their own journey. And so I wanted them to take the opportunity as they were reading my journey to um, really reflect on their own journey because we all have Um, our own journeys. And whether you have a very, very small challenge in your life, um, like my dog just tried to eat the candy bars from my last book signing event in the closet, to, you know, a massive stroke, we all have things in our lives that don't go as planned. And it's what you're going to do with it. And and, uh, my my dog is, um, his name's Maverick. He's a seven-month-old German Shepherd. And I recently um, acquired him because I um, I do feel strongly and, and very passionate about encouraging others um, on my journey and what I've learned. And I, for so long, I just persevered. I just wanted to get better. I wanted to belong. I wanted to be part of my peer group. And I wasn't vulnerable about what I was going through. And I learned over time in my maturity and um, as I aged that vulnerability is so important to connect with others, to support others. And uh, um, and to just to be a blessing to others is is part of that vulnerability. But I could not um, do a lot of the things that I want to do on my own. And my husband's not always available to help me. And so Maverick now is. And so as he's getting trained and as he grows into this new helper role, um, he's going to enable me to go out into the community the way I want um, to support others. And um, as an author and speaker, um, that's my goal to just use the journey and use um, the challenges that I've gone through that I can't change um, to hopefully encourage others and help others to understand um, when you don't have control. And I think that's why we all get stuck and what where we're at is because of our lack of control. And what I'm learning and what I hope other people will learn is we do have control and we do have a choice. Um, our choice comes in our reaction. Um, the challenges, um, no, we don't have a choice over the challenges, but we do have a choice over our reaction to those circumstances. And that's where um, my writing has come in. That's where my speaking has come in. And uh, I encourage others to... Uh, remember, they always have a choice, and that comes in your reaction. I I I think it really I I'm the title of your book, and we're gonna do for those that want to curious. I'll put a link where you can purchase a book in the, the uh, video description after the show. So we'll I appreciate that in there. Well, thank but you. It really, comes you won't go long. But I think really what your book's title really says it all. It's a choice. And, you know, I have, and I know that Kim, 
She struggles a little bit, and I don't know because I'm gonna say ninety over ninety percent of stroke survivors are stuck. They're stuck, and the caregivers left with, "How can I encourage them to want to get better?" I mean to tell you, it's because they don't think they can. Right, right, and I think I think um, and and Kim, I so much appreciate you being on here. I'll address you because you're you're doing such a great job commenting to us. Um, you have a really hard job, and I know my husband um, as my caregiver, my family, um, they had a really hard job also um, as as my caregiver. So um, I I commend you for what you're doing. Uh, my husband uh, has a hard job um, keeping me down sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, but we have a hard job as caregivers, I believe, um, two ways. Um, number one, keeping up sometimes with the with the um, wants and needs of our of our survivors, and sometimes we have a hard job as caregivers um, matching the personalities because if we're as a caregiver a go getter, and our survivors aren't, and they they get stuck. It's hard because we want to live vicariously through them and, and keep them going. And sometimes the survivors don't have that in them. And so that's hard. But on the other hand, I was the opposite. I was the extrovert of our relationship and my husband was the introvert. And so I was the go-getter and I was the one that kept getting stuck because I wanted to go out and do, but my family was just so exhausted taking care of me. So that it's, it's that partnership and that team. And so I just, I, I, my heart goes out to every caregiver and my heart goes out to every survivor because really when tragedy happens like this and it's an unexpected tragedy, um, you know, any illness, whether it's cancer, diabetes, um, stroke, it's, it's hard because they're all unexpected challenges that hit, um, not only the survivor, but they hit family and the caregiver and they exhaust everybody and everybody has a different personality. So um, just remember you're a team. And I see so many times these um, tragedies break up the team. So if you can keep the team together and work together and figure out what works, um, you know, I, I commend you and, uh, you know, love is um, the strongest bond. My husband and I were five years into our marriage when this happened and uh, we just celebrated 25. And so, uh, and, and again, it goes back to God's plan. My husband grew up in a um, house where his mom battled cancer most of his life. Um, she passed away um, uh, from breast cancer um, after battling for 16 years. And I say many times um, that was, again, part of God's plan because had he not grown up in that environment where he watched his dad take care of his mom um, and, and had that innate compassion, I don't know that he would have had the uh, ability to take care of me the way he has. Um, and not that we don't, we, we get irritated and we fight just like any other couple. Um, you know, even though I'm a, a survivor and he's a caregiver, we, and so give yourself that grace, you know, just because you're a caregiver and you're a survivor uh, and you're in this, you're in this struggle, um, you're under more stress than most couples, but also give yourself the grace to laugh and to fight just like any other couple we do. And, and we talk <laughs> about the fact that we do. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I argue with them about working out like any other couple and we argue about the same things any other couple would. So um, remember that too, that you're entitled to that and you're under more stress than a lot of other couples. Yeah, I think, I think we don't necessarily, and I want to encourage all search survivors out there worldwide, take, just be easy on a caregiver, yeah. but their spouse, family member, whoever it is, make sure you show appreciation yes. because they are under a tremendous, I like what I've had my stroke, my brain injury, and it was some 13 years ago. And you know, you know, stroke decimates you financially. Yeah. And I saw my wife sell a wedding ring, buy the well, over 10,000 bucks just to make the mortgage payment. And she has been through a salute. So I want to just take a pause and say thank you to all the caregivers out there. Yeah. 
Because without you, there would be no strict survivors. There yeah. would be, right? I mean, Lord, you would not be accomplishing what you do. I would not be doing what I do with this podcast if there was not caregivers. So, yeah. we, uh, and the main thing I wanted to touch on before we go, because then I, yeah, I, I figured it would go by quick, but man, it's flying by. It is. It yeah, is. 30 minutes just by quick. But I wanted to touch, you had your stroke at a young age, but you were married at the time. But I wanted to trust how, something that I see out there, I've seen out there for nine years, getting stuck as a stroke survivor. What do you, in your opinion, what do you think causes them to be stuck? I think... Uh... I think a lot of things. I think uh, one thing is we want our old life back and we can't get our old life back. And so then we get stuck and we think, I, if I can't have my old life back, how do I move forward? That's number one. I think number two is we try and compete. Um, and even if it's in our heart and our brain knows we can't compete and compare, um, we try and compete still with our peers. I know I still do it and I know I, I'm not supposed to, um, but we just want to keep up with our peer group. And, um, you know, our bodies just won't allow us to. I mean, I know my body won't allow me to do some of the things my peers can do. And that is aggravating to us. And so you have to um, you have to recognize where your lane is and stay. And I know God has gifted me and I am so incredibly blessed. I should not be able to write a book. I should not be able to speak. I should not be able to do the things I'm able to do, but I can. That doesn't mean I can keep up with the things that my peers can do. And I have to stay in my lane and you have to stay in your lane. And everybody has to remember that just because um, you want to do it doesn't mean um, you can, but that doesn't mean you have to be depressed about it if you can't do it. You just have to find your right niche. And then support. There is the right support system for each and every person. But if you have a friend that doesn't understand, it's very easy to get upset when that friend doesn't understand. Um, and I've done that too. And it's very hard to find that friend and support system that does understand. Many people don't understand uh, medical challenges. So whether it's professional help, whether it's a group support system like yours or another Facebook group or professional counseling, um, you have to find the right support system um, to support you. And you can't go this alone. So there are so many groups out there in this day and age um, that it's important to find the right support system and never give up. Perseverance is key and just keep going. Yeah, I think realize that there's hope. hope. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing that I do this podcast for because I think people are called they're going to recover. And then when they don't, like you have a flu or a cold or something, sorry, not going to happen. You out there, I'm not trying to uh, dishearten you, but you're not going to recover. You're going to need to rebuild. You are going to take a physical effort to rebuild your life after stroke. And I'm, that's really true. And how do you know? Look, I think of Kim. I knew her personally. I've talked to her sometimes. Her husband sometimes is stuck. A lot of that is because they look back. Their life used to be. And so they just kind of give up and go, well, I'm just going to suck. I'm going to sit here like this wish never happened. Well, it did happen. And we all wish it never happened, right? But if it hadn't happened, what, you know, where would we be? You know, had we, you know, I look back and think, yeah, had this not happened, many things would be easier. Absolutely. But had it not happened, there were, there's so many things that wouldn't happen. So you have to, and, and if, if you, if, if you've had a tough challenge and you're not making anything happen and you're just stuck, then do something, affect someone, go find a stroke hospital um, that's right up the street or a therapy clinic and start, 
using what you've gone through to help someone else because I guarantee you're not the only one feeling this way. There is someone else feeling just as desperate that's probably a step behind you that could use a friend. So go find that person and and tap into them and help them because uh, that I mean finding other people um, that are a step behind you uh, is is key. I I am now in uh, three um, stroke support groups that I speak at monthly, and I tell you, just being able to speak at those stroke support groups monthly and have those connections and know that I can speak to those people that are years behind me. Um, has helped me greatly. I don't know if I'm helping them, but I know they're helping me. And I didn't go into this for them to help me, but they are helping me so much. So I guarantee the more you um, try and help other people, I guarantee those people are going to help you. You know, that's a really great. I want to end on this topic because a lot of times we sit there and I'm going to say that a lot of people get stuck. A lot of strokes are often stuck for one reason. They got their eyes on themselves, they're throwing their pity party, they're throwing why me, all this. But Lori just touched on a, a true spiritual reality. You give. Get your eyes off yourself and serve others. Use your stroke to be a message. You stroke to help others. And as you give, like Laurie just said, you get back 10 times what you gave. And then you end up, those people that you're helping will get back the energy and you'll live a blessed life. I found that true to be in my life. So it's crazy, Laurie. We're, we're actually over time, but I want to, is there any final word that you would like to say? Um, I just want to, uh, number one, I want to address the people um, online who have expressed comments. And I would just say, uh, if you jump on my website, which Aaron will put in the comments on my website, um, that it's www.lorivober.com. It's just my last name. I would love for you guys to uh, start connecting with me personally, my email, my web, uh, all my information is on there. I have a monthly newsletter. Um, and uh, Sherry even uh, responded there that she can't talk because it's difficult. But you know what? If you can do things with your hands, like arts and crafts, Sherry, um, that would even be great. I mean, anything that you can do as a communication, you don't have to talk to love people. So if you can even do things and find things outside the box, um, you know, anything you can do to love people, um, think out, start thinking outside the box. Um, that I guess I just close with with that. Uh, whatever you can do, um, and, and just remember, your worth doesn't come from other people. It comes from your creator. And uh, don't um, depend on social media to depend on who um, who made you and um, who who defines um, how great you are and where you are um, as far as how good you're doing. Wow, that is. Amazing. There's so much there. I'm, gonna, I'm going to have you back on because I think we, you've got a message I want people to hear. And I'm thinking that I want to make sure that people understand that stroke doesn't define who you are. No. But how you respond does. Yes. Yes. Use it. Use it, guys. I mean, this happened for a reason. It doesn't define you, but you can use it for a reason. Boom, with that, we're going to we're say, Lori, I cannot thank you enough for being out there and being part of the show. I really am part of this podcast. I really am excited to get to have you back on because I wanted to I see, I see a really focus on your book. I really want to focus on your choice. And there's so much I want to get on. Thank you so much for being here, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron, for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.
Like what you just heard? Visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.